for our scripture reading. So short a scripture to read and so meaningful, not only to me, but maybe to you. Psalms 119, verse 18. As it reads on the screen, open my eyes. Open my eyes. That what? That I may see what? Wonderful things from your law. May God bless the scriptures. Amen. Good morning, boys and girls. Did we all have breakfast this morning? Yes, I'll say it again. Good morning, boys and girls. Good morning. Good morning. Um, are we all happy to be here? Yes. Okay, can you show by raising your hands? Okay, so we're not going to have a story this morning, but we're going to have a bit of a role play this morning. So I'll need three volunteers later on, but before we do that, um, I'm just going to ask you kids, uh, the theme of our, our role play is counting our blessings. Um, do we know what a blessing is? Yeah? Blessing is something that gives. A blessing is something good that God gives to us. Absolutely, amen. Does anybody want to say anything? Okay. Can I have one volunteer, please? Because what are we going to do? I want each and every one of you children to just think of a blessing or a gift or anything that you think uh, God has been good to you. Is that okay? Okay, who's going to be my volunteer? Okay, do you want to come? What's your name? Tino. Okay, do you want to come here? Okay. So I want you to give each and every child one sticker. Is that okay? Okay. Ria, do you want to help? you to do I want you to write or oh, one thing that you've been thankful about today it doesn't have to be today it can be in the week in the last year you know one thing that we think uh, God has blessed us with okay Ria okay so can we all write? I don't have so many pencils, so we have to take in turns. We have to share, because God wants us to share. Okay? And then when we finish, we need to put them in this little, little jar. Okay? So write about anything that you think God has really done for you. You know, it can be a blessing, it can be your gift, or anything that you're thankful about today. And then when you read what you, you've been blessed with, you put it in the box. Helping me learn to swim. <laughs> helping me learn to swim. Okay, so Ria has said helping Leon to swim. Okay? Shelter. 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 Okay, do you want to come closer? Because I can. Nice family. Nice family. God has given me a friend. What's your name? Tino. Tino. God has given Tino a friend. Bring me safely to my 
to another country. Wow, amen. What's your name? Salai. Salai. Okay. Come closer. God bless me with cousins. God bless me with cousins, okay? Blessing me with luck. Going to bless me with luck, okay? Jill? My baby brother. Amen. Okay, okay. Okay. What's your name? Uh, Monday. Yeah. So Monday, right? Um, you just wrote Monday. Okay. Kai, do you want to come up? Playing with my cousin. Playing with my cousins. Amen. Amen. So we can see that God has blessed all of us with so many things. Okay, so now I need three volunteers to do the role play. I need uh, somebody who will speak up quite loudly. So I need three people to come up. If people don't volunteer, I'll just pick, I'll just pick anybody. Anybody? Okay, Tina. Um, anybody else? Ria? Jillian. Okay. is Mary and Gillian is Miss Jones and Tino is Tom. Okay, do you want to help? Yeah, okay. Okay. So, Mary and Tom run towards the teacher on the playground. This um, role play teaches us that we need to count our blessing and we need to uh, stop complaining and encouraging one, one another, no matter how small things are, we need to be grateful. So we'll start with Mary. Excuse me, Miss Jones. Yes, Mary, you both look upset. When we are the ball. Please stop for a second, Tom. Do you want to tell me something what has happened, what has upset you? Yes. All right, but first I need to know I need to know about what has pleased you. When we had the ball, Joshua came up and Did it please you? What? Then, that's not what you need to tell me first. I would like, I would like each of you to tell me about, about two good things that have happened to you today. They don't have to be big things. If, in fact, that they can be tiny just so long as they, can, they were good things that pleased you. You start then. I got to sit next to a April this morning. And that made you happy? Yes. Because? Be because she's the new girl and I got a chance to I'm sure April was very glad to have you sitting next to her. Your turn, Tom. I can't think of anything. Then you must try harder. Take a few seconds to think. Let me 
any help? Did anything happen at home before you got to school that pleased you? Did you have breakfast? Yes. Then you're pleased you had breakfast. Would you have prepared, preferred to have no breakfast to come to school? something that pleased you? Yeah. But that happens every day. Not for everyone, Tom. How lucky you are to start every day with something that pleases you. Now, I thought of that one. The next one you need to think of your, for yourself. Your second one, please, Mary. Standing here talking to you. Interesting. Are you being sin sincere, cracking a joke, or making fun of me? Being sincere. <laughs> then I believe you, and I'm glad you're enjoying our moment together. Tom? Be I got to help Miss Blossom out with the art. <laughs> And you were happy to help? Yes. So do you think you could both find quite a few things to feel pleased about today if you thought hard about it? Yes. I'm sure you can, and it's important that you can. Now this complaint you wanted to make about Joshua, let me ask you a question. Is it sort of important Important or in extremely important? Hey. 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 Sort of important. Hey. Do you agree, Tom? Hey. Hey. Do you think do you think you can sort it out yourself? Or do you need me to help you with this problem? That sort of mm -hmm. We could sort it out ourselves. It's good. You know that. If you do, if you do, you'll have another thing to add to your list of things to be pleased about. Sorry. Soon you'll be able to say, today we sorted a problem out ourselves. That's something to be pleased about. Off you go and find Joshua. Thank you. Okay. So this story is teaching us that um, we need to count our blessings. And, um, you know, there are other children in different parts of the world uh, who don't have clean water, who don't have breakfast. I think someone just mentioned that they had breakfast. So God wants us to be thankful for everything that he's blessed us with, okay? So in closing, I'll read from Psalms 103, 1 to 2. It says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. So in everything that we do, in all the gifts that God has blessed us with, we all need to be thankful and be grateful. Who wants to pray? Tina. Let's close our eyes. Dear Jesus, thank you for me. Thank you for all the children around the world. Yeah, please give them food. Uh, if they don't have any home, please help us to be broken. Uh, uh, please help us to listen. Please help us to do good things, not bad things. But please help us to do 
everything that you ask that you do. Um, may you please forgive us in Jesus' name and say Amen. 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 Kai, do you want to pray? Dear God, help us to be good. We help, we help us to we help us to listen in church. We help, we help us not to hurt anybody and help us to be safe with our parents. Amen. Amen. You can go back to your seats. Jesus loves the little children. church we have people who have come from other churches to come and join us we also have people who live around who have come every week to worship but above all all of us I believe we have come for one reason to recognize the presence of God in our lives. 
I don't know about you, but I'll tell you about myself. Many times when things go wrong in my life, God gives me the benefit of reflecting. Sometimes I wonder where things went wrong. Sometimes I wonder whether it's me. Even when I've had a little problem with somebody, my family will know that the best I can do is to go back and apologize because I can never be perfect. When I was asked to preach today, I got a bit scared because for the past 10 years, a few years, each pastor was coming here from the time I came into the church, which is over 10 years ago, we have changed pastors. But surprisingly, every pastor, within the period they have served as pastors, there has been a year they have asked me to preach on the last day of the year. And this is one of them. Last week I was sharing in front there, I said, I, I'm getting scared. What exactly is the message? Psalms 119, verse 18. It says, open my eyes that I may see wonderful things in your law. This is the problem that we have. Until our eyes are open, that we can see. There are people in here who even might not even have a reason to count their blessings. There are people in here whose eyes are still closed. They don't see that they, there is something they can look at as a blessing. Having come from 2016, 31st, 31st December, the last Sabbath in 2016 was 31 December. Some of us were here. Some of us might have been in other churches. But definitely, for someone to be sitting in this church now, it doesn't mean that person had been resurrected in between the year. It means that 31st December last year, that person was alive. Amen? You might have been in this church, you might have been at home, you might have been in another church, but 31st December, you were, your heart was still ticking. And that is the point. Blessed, my brothers and sisters, blessed are those who fear the Lord, who find great delight in his commands. I'm looking for a volunteer. I'm looking for a volunteer to read for me Joshua chapter 3. I'm looking for a volunteer chapter 3. And when you have found it, and that volunteer, I would like him, him or her to read by using a mic. Kath, are you there? Can you read? Which mic can we use? Which one? Blue? Yellow. 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 We're going to use yellow. Uh, Sister Kath is going to read. I will read... Uh, uh, Chapter 3, verse 3, and Sister Kathy will start from 14, and she'll go all the way to 17, and she'll stop at 17. So, she's ready, but I'm going to read Joshua chapter 3, verse 3. Joshua chapter 3, and I'm reading um, verse 3. Early in the morning, Joshua and all the Israelites set out from the Shittim and went to the Jordan where they camped before crossing over. And in 14, Kath. And it came to pass when the people removed from their tents to pass over Jordan and the priests bearing the Ark of the Covenant before the people. And as they that bear the Ark were come unto Jordan, and the feet of the priests that bear the ark were dipped in the brim of the water, for Jordan overfloweth all his banks, all the time of harvest, that the waters which came down from above stood and rose up upon a heap, 
very far from the city, mm. Adam, that is beside Zartan, and those that came down toward the sea of the plain. Even the salt sea failed and were cut off, and the people passed over right against Jericho. And the priests that bear the ark of the covenant of the Lord stood firm on dry ground in the midst of Jordan, and all the Israelites passed over on dry ground Amen. until all the people were passed clean over Jordan. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Sister. Thank you. The last Sabbath of 2016 on, was on 31st December. 2016 was 31st of December. Like I mentioned earlier, we finished 2017, 2016. And we have, which is globally known, people would have their plans for the following year. They call them resolutions. And we want to stop doing something. We want to go to the gym. We want to be vegetarian. We want to pray more. We want to choose somebody who is going to be our prayer warrior. We want to look at something different. We want to be committed to church. And people say, this is the time that I want to do the best I have done for the family. And definitely, 2016, when we're finishing on the hour of 2016, someone out there, and I'm, I'm sure one of us in here had a resolution. We had a plan that when I get to 20, 2017, when the bell rings on that particular hour in the middle of the night, I will start my 2017. Amen? What we don't know is whether from 2017, that hour when it came, and it became January 2017, to now that I'm standing here and I'm sitting there, what I don't know is whether there's a re the resolution that you set as a goal to achieve something, I don't know whether you've achieved it. But today, as and I'm saying today, as the last Sabbath of 2017, we only have one thing in common is to be able to look at where we're coming from to this very day and think about our tomorrow. Next week, when we come in this church, it will be 2018. Are you still going to be my friend? Will you still be able to walk on that door and not shake my hands because we're enemies in 2017? Will you still be able to count our blessings and say, this is what the Lord has done for me? 2017 is what we're finishing now. 2018 is, by, by, by the time we meet again in this church, it will be 2018. I don't know about you, but I'll tell you about me. One thing for certain, for my family, it wasn't an easy year. We traveled on a winding road. I don't know about you. Did you have any challenges? I'll tell you, we had our challenges. But, like I said more than once, we are sitting where we are sitting and being able to enter because he allowed us to enter into here. But I've got a question for you. And that is my question. What did you do right? What did you do right to qualify that from 2016, 31st December, to this very day, you are still sitting where you are sitting? What did you do right? What did I do right to be able to qualify, to justify, to be able to convince God that keep me alive to this very day? That's a question to you. And that's a question to me. I sent on a forum that maybe someone would just have a burning desire to share a testimony of what has happened to someone between 1st, 1st January 2017 to 30th December 2017. Someone who can say, I believe God blessed me. I believe, and I'll say to you, before you can say anything, I'll tell you, God saved me. One evening, 
I went, as usual, I was supposed to drop my wife at work. We got ready, I took Agnes to work. Surprisingly, it was just another one of the days when it's foggy in the evening and it was drizzling and I dropped my wife and I was coming back. And as I got up to the, to the top of the road, I thought I heard a little, a little click in the engine. So I felt, oh, why don't I just check? You know, men, we think we are, me we are, we are mechanics. <laughs> but we are not mechanics. We think we are mechanics. We think we are electricians. We think we can do anything. So every time we have a little problem with the car, you want to try and fix it first. Until you mess it up, then you say, Aggie, can I go to the mechanic? So I decided to stop the car. But because it was raining, it was also dark. I left the lights on, I put the hazards on, and I came. I, my first reaction was that I wanted to go to check what was wrong. And then I discovered from this car that there was a light indicating that I needed to top water in the radiator. So immediately I remembered that I, we always, we have always traditionally in our family carried water with us in the boots. So I said, oh, why don't I just go to the boot and pick up a bottle of water and add the water? So I came out of the car, but the engine was still running. Lights were still on, the lights were still flashing, hazards. So I came out of the car, the engine is still running, and I came to the boot. For some reason, it was still a bit, of fog, a bit foggy. For some reason, I couldn't open the boot. But this boot is supposed to be opened, unfortunately, from the car. I can't open it outside. So I remember that, oh, I needed to go back to the car and press a button to open the boot because I cannot open it outside. Do you know, I literally moved out of the boot, literally just moved a matter of a second, I just moved out of the boot and I felt a force of wind, power. And before I realized it was a big bang on my car, And I couldn't believe it. So, so then, uh, I discovered that, oh, it is an accident. A lady came out, leaving her car running, no brakes, simply came to me and recognized me and said, Hastings, I'm sorry. So she jumped on me and hugged me and said, I'm sorry I would have killed you. Her car was rolling back. My car was going that way. The end of the story is that I'm standing here because I was not killed on that accident. And also the end of the story is that when that accident took place, I didn't end up in the hospital. It, it was going to be possible that this car with that force would have just run on my legs, on my knees, and I was going to be paralyzed forever. Have you got, have you got a testimony? Do you have a testimony to tell the church something you think God has done for you between January to 30 December? Someone? Is there anybody who can tell us a story of the Father's, the Father's love to have saved you? If you have, you want to raise your hand and share a story? Share, amen, and please, can I have Brother Lenny to have, a, to have a microphone here just to tell us what God has done for him, amen? Can I use the yellow? Okay. Amen. amen? Brother Lenny? Just want to say, I have a testimony. It's not about, is it on? Yes, yes we can hear you. It's not about anything to do with anybody, only something that happened to myself. My wife at the moment is suffering from Parkinson. Yes. And I also have a problem walking. And I've been told about six months earlier that I've got a 
spur on my spine. And it's growing and it needs to be taken off. However, because the wife was ill and not too long even have operation on her knee, I decided that I didn't want to have two invalids in the house. So I decided that I wasn't going to have it. Yes. But it was giving me plenty of problem. I couldn't turn over in bed. I couldn't do nothing. Yes. I could hardly walk. Everybody knew that I was bending over. Amen. And um, I went back to see the man who was going to do the operation, and he said to me, he says, I've warned you about this thing. It's got to come off. Yes. And it's got to be done by an operation. That day, I happened to push my wife in a wheelchair and go into the office where he was. And he said to the wife, he says, I don't know about you, but I tell your husband he need to have this operation. And she agreed. Amen. So I went into Salford Hospital in July. And they told me that I would be up in Salford for two days. So I said to the family, don't even come and visit me because I don't need a visitor for just two nights away from home. Yes. But five days later, I asked them, why was I still there? And they said to me, the operation that they did has not done the job because they sent me to have a MRI scan and found out that they haven't taken off enough bone. So after five days operation, and the seventh day they have to operate again. And they told me that it's more dangerous than the one before. Yes. However, they went through with it, and I came out on the 4th of August. And when I came out, they told me mustn't lift, mustn't twist, mustn't turn, mustn't bend, mustn't do anything. But when I went, the hanging basket at home was burning up and so I started watering them the very same day. Yes. And that wasn't a good thing to do, but I'm just telling you that God is so wonderful and great that now my wife can't do nothing in the house and I've got to do everything. Amen. Shopping, cleaning, cooking, running about. Amen. And I'm telling you that God is really able to do for us more than we ever thought, think, or even imagine. Hallelujah. Powerful things that God can do for us. Amen. Because I'm sitting by Sister Crooks here, and she told me that she's going to go to hospital at Salford. Yes. But I told her, if it's that man that I see, God bless that man. Amen. He did a perfect job. Amen. And here I am. And I want to give God thanks. Amen. And I thank you all for the prayers that went up for me, because I know God has done great things for me. Amen. And I'm glad. Amen. So, this is Hallelujah. my, for that particular year, Yes. God has done miracle for me. And I hope that somebody else, maybe somewhere, be lucky as I am. Amen. At my old age. Amen. Amen. I've got a sister just behind there. You want to say something? You raised your hand? Right. <clears throat> there are a lot of stories real stories from real people that's what the television says isn't it real stories from real people in their challenges so we have um, a situation where we can confirm that the god that we believe in is a true god and sure enough just to confirm what my sisters have always sung that god makes a way where there's no way but I want to remind you this morning that we read from the chapter, Joshua chapter 3, where we are told that the Israelites were able to cross, to cross, what did they cross? River Jordan. Jordan, I don't know about you, but I'll tell you about me that where we come from in Africa, there is a big river called Shire. It is huge. You cannot cross it by foot. Huge. And when we read about Jordan, I strongly believe that Jordan is just like a, a little lake, but a big, powerful river. What is so special about the story of Jordan, I will tell you that it, what is so special is the very fact that when they reached River Jordan, the water stopped. What am I saying? The water stopped. The water, wherever it was coming from, it stood like a wall. Right? Where the water stopped, whatever water was remaining went away to the bottom. 
But there's one thing that's important in this whole message. Those who crossed that river, they crossed on a what? Dry ground. Tell me something. Did it take three days so that the water has stopped and therefore the water which was remaining in the river has gone down, but there must be enough sunlight to dry the ground so that it must be dry. Is that what the Bible says? Is that the, what the Bible says? No. The moment the water stopped and built a wall, the water that was remaining in the river went down. Did it take three days to cross over? Immediate people started crossing over. But as they were crossing over, wherever they were walking was dry. Do you see God in it? Do you see God in it? But I will tell you this, until you have been stuck, until you have been involved in some challenges where you don't even know where to turn to, you cannot see God in it. What Lane is talking about is a reality of what people face in reality, that certain things happen in their lives. And when it happens, they can say, my daughter Hazel say, some of these things, don't even talk about it, ma'am. Don't talk about it, Dad, because some of these things are beyond our understanding. Some of these things are beyond our standing. And the reason why I chose this topic was you must be able to count your blessings. You know, Christianity can never be Christianity until we see God in our challenges where sometimes we are actually traveling on a winding road where families cannot talk to each other, where our children walk away from church and they can never come back and we are saying, what exactly is happening? Where our families are completely ill, we think they are going to die in 2017, but they are still there. Where our jobs are shaking, but we are still employed. Where we have problems at home, in our, in wherever we came from, we hear stories and all these issues, but God is still there. 2017, if we said everyone should stand and make a story and tell, all of us have got a story. No one can be left out without having something to say. I will say to you, just like I said to myself, that until we see God in what is happening to us, it is going to be impossible to tell somebody at your working place that God is real. Because we are having a situation here, we are supposed to be going to preach God to people who don't believe in him. And until you believe that whatever is happening in your life, there is God in it. Until you tell them that you see what you are seeing me, I'm the product of God. That yes, I might have a winding road, but I'm not going to anywhere else, but I still kneel down and pray because God makes it possible. Why do you believe? Until we become the ones who go out that door to go to the next neighbor and say, you know what? God is real. The, the reason why this church doesn't, we don't have anybody who lives on this street who comes to this church. They're still doubting. We have doubting Thomases along the road, along the community. They even wonder, Ayonika, when you say you're going to church on Sabbath, they say, why? They even wonder. Until we go out there and tell them that, you know what? The reason why I go to church, not only that is written in the Bible, but my life is a Bible. I have a story to tell. Christianity, <laughs> Christianity is not about being born in the Seventh-day Adventist church, my brothers and sisters. It's not about being born in a church and become a father and a mother, you become a father and a mother of children who have seen you going to church. Christianity is believing that the God that you trust is able to turn things around for you. Is to be able to see God in what is happening to you as a human being. I am praying for parents, young parents who are raising children now. John, you have your, you have son there. We have seen children coming. I am praying for you. It is a challenge to raise children, but above all, you only need God. 
You need God to take you through. So that when our children leave the house and go to school, what they are told and what we tell them should be the same. And we are actually praying for the leadership of the church. So that instead of standing here and actually praise ourselves that we have differences, we should be saying we want to solve the differences and be Christians. This church is like a family. I am a wife, I have a wife, I am a husband, I have a wife, I have children. Until I, if I tell my children that me and my wife, who happen to be their mother, we don't agree. What do you think will happen to my children? They have to choose whom to work with. So my three children will decide, me, I'll work with mom, and someone will say, me, I'll work with dad. Is that what we want in this church? Is that what you want in this church? 2017 is finishing tomorrow. But in terms of Sabbath, this is the last Sabbath. Christians, leaders of the church, let us work, unite, to build a united church, not a divided church. We might come from different backgrounds, but let us remember one thing. The reason why we are here is because we all believe in the Bible. We must come from a different background, different color of skin. But there's only one thing that doesn't change. There's one thing that doesn't change. You come where I'm coming from. I come from where I'm coming from. We are here together, but we believe in one thing, and that's the Bible. We have a responsibility. If, you, if I think, if I think I'm the one who knows better than you, Instead of dividing you and me, let me build a bridge. Because that's what Christianity is all about. Counting our blessings in 2018 is to be able to work as a family. To be able to build a family, to build a foundation, to be able to work with the community. But above all, I'm saying, board members, be careful. Because the people who are not board members, they are looking up to you as parents. You can have your differences. You can say anything. Fight up there. Don't bring it in here. What people see, want to see in here is a divided mom and dad. What people want to see in this church is, is no, not a divided. What people want to see in here is a united mom and dad. They want to see united parents. They want to see a church that works together. They want to see the church that sings together. They don't want to see someone who will stand here and say we are divided. And then I choose who is going to work with me and who is going to work with somebody. That is not what the church is all about. 2017, it has been a winding road, not only to the families, it has been a winding road in the church. We might have united, we might have been united to build a new church, put new carpets, all blue and beautiful, buy new chairs, come to church. Is that the reason why I want to show to somebody that I am, uh, for me, I want to operate differently. It is 2017, last Sabbath of the year. Are you still going to be the same 2018, the, the first Sabbath of the year? Will you still be hurting? I want to say to you, and I'm saying to the church, there might be people in here that are, have always been regular members of the church. If there's anybody, and tell everybody, and I know this is a recorded message, if there's somebody I might have hurt, I want you to forgive me. I want to enter 2018 a new Christian. I want to enter 2018 to be a blessing to you. I want to enter 2018 to be somebody whom one can think of as a Christian. There's a song that we normally sing. Lord, I want to be a Christian. In my heart, in my heart. My brother, can you get to Lord, I want to be a Christian. While we are finding that, 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 that song that we are going to sing, and I'll be finishing up there, I wanted to say, over the year, we saw something else as a challenge 
Kath, can you stand? Just stand where you are. The sister, Kath, I call her Kath. She's my friend, my best friend. She's my brother's wife. She's my very everything. She was given a responsibility, which she accepted, to lead this church into prayer. And she said something. Find somebody to be your praying partner. How many of you have prayed with your praying partner? Today is the last day of the year. Have you prayed for somebody? Have you still remembered your praying partner? Sister Kathy is going to be continuing next year. And this is the same message you have. Let us pray as a church. Let us be a praying church, not a hurting church. We are going to sing just this one. Lord, I want to be a Christian. Let's sing. Lord, I want to be a Christian. In my heart, in my heart, Lord, I want to be a Christian. In my heart, in my heart, in my heart, Lord, I want to be a Christian. In my heart. Lord, I want to be more loving in my heart, in my heart. Lord, I want to be more loving in my heart, in my heart. In my heart, in my heart, Lord, I want to be more holy in my heart. In my heart, in my heart, Lord, I want to be more As we finish to go home, let us ask the Lord to be in our hearts. Because if you have Jesus in your heart, you can't even remember to hurt somebody. If you have Jesus in your heart, even your own pride will challenge you. Because God wants us to be a united church. God wants us to be a blessing to each other. 2018, my brothers, is a challenge for you as a Christian to be able to be a blessing, not only to somebody in this church, to your family, to people at work. Remember, it is a mission that we have. If you have accepted to be a Christ, a Christless leader, if you have accepted to be a Christian, if you have accepted to represent Christ, then you have to be able to work with the Bible. Let somebody see you as a Christian who can forgive, who can lead, who can love without measure. Amen.